The Iran-Contra affair is probably the biggest scandal of the Reagan administration, but what if in an alternate timeline the scandal never happened? But first, we need to look at what happened in order to see what it was and what can be changed and what would happen if it never occurred. The Sandinistas in Nicaragua had been the first communist guerrilla group to seize power in Latin America. Fighting against the Sandinistas was a group called the Contras, who committed a lot of war crimes just like the Sandinistas did. Funding of the Contras had been banned by the U.S. Congress with the Bullard Amendment, and Reagan was very passionate about hating communism. That's the Contra part of the Iran-Contra affair. The Iran part comes with a hostage situation in Lebanon and the Iran-Iraq War. Iran had previously had the Iranian Revolution, and in 1983, the U.S. launched Operation Staunch to prevent the flow of arms into Iran. In Lebanon, Hezbollah had taken American hostages, and Iran claimed that they would get Hezbollah to release them in exchange for American weapons shipped through Israel to Iran as Iran was fighting against Iraq. The profits gained from selling the weapons to Iran would be used to fund the Contras. The whole thing became a big scandal for obvious reasons. The U.S. was selling weapons to Iran illegally and funding the Contras illegally. Some of the American hostages would be released in exchange for larger weapon sales to Iran. However, the hostage crisis continued until the early 90s. Also, another part to the Iran-Contra affair was the Panamanian dictator and drug dealer Manuel Noriega, who was working with the U.S. and had Panama being used as a staging ground for operations against the Sandinistas. With that context, let's get into our three different scenarios. Scenario 1 has the U.S. and Israel decide not to sell weapons to Iran to try to fund the Contras. It's unknown how the Lebanon hostage situation goes. They might try more negotiation. That might work out, but it probably wouldn't. Maybe some kind of military operation occurs in Lebanon to free the hostages, but who knows. Reagan only remains vocally supportive of the Contras, and there are probably many members of Reagan's administration who had been convicted in our timeline who would then be part of George H.W. Bush's administration in 1988, as they are not arrested. This potentially removes Dick Cheney as Secretary of Defense and gives George W. Bush a better vice presidential option, and he has a potentially more popular presidency as Cheney is one of the worst vice presidents in American history. The Contras are possibly defeated earlier. The USS Stark attack may not happen. Iraq likes the U.S. in the 1980s better, and it's possible that the U.S. could pressure Iraq to stop genocide against the Kurds, but that's unlikely as Saddam Hussein was Saddam. There's more trust in the U.S. government and an even larger George H.W. Bush victory in 1988, and there's a potential 1992 win for Bush, but who knows. Scenario 2 has the Reagan administration be better at hiding the scandal so that it doesn't come out. Then the U.S. continues to fund the Contras covertly and the actions remain classified for an unknown time. The results are likely the same as Scenario 1, but with funding for the Contras covertly still happening. So basically, pretty much a lot of the stuff that happened in Scenario 1 still happens in this scenario, except the Contras are still funded and the Sandinistas have more trouble fighting them. Scenario 3 has Reagan being assassinated in 1981 and George H.W. Bush becomes President of the United States with Howard Baker as Vice President and the 1984 election sees Bush gain a second term and defeats Walter Mondale. The U.S. does not give aid to the Contras under the Bush administration and has a bit more moderate term than Reagan did. Reagan was very passionate about things like the Contras and the Mujahideen and Bush wasn't as much, and he would not go behind Congress's back to fund the Contras through illegal means. You see, the Reagan Doctrine had called for funding against all communist groups, no matter who was being supported against. Meanwhile, Bush had a greater understanding of global affairs, as he had been ambassador to the UN, chief liaison to China, and director of the CIA. Although Bush wouldn't outspend the Soviets as much as Reagan did, he would still shoot up defense spending to weaken the USSR. Bush would also likely invade Grenada, intervene in Honduras, and bomb Gaddafi like Reagan did. But I think that he would also invade Panama, but a lot sooner than he did in our timeline, as Bush was not friends with Noriega, and without needing him for the Contras, the U.S. has every incentive to depose that authoritarian drug dealer. Bob Dole would win the 1988 presidential election against Michael Dukakis and might have someone like John McCain as his vice president. It's unknown how Dole would conduct the Gulf War and the end of the Cold War, but I think he would rationally try to do similar things to the way that George H.W. Bush had done in our timeline. But we'll never know that for sure. 
Also, we'll never know what the impacts in this third scenario would have been with Reagan's assassination. With that, I'll end this scenario. But those are just three possibilities for if the Iran-Contra affair had never happened. Which of these three scenarios did you think was most plausible, and which one did you enjoy the most? What do you think would have happened if the Iran-Contra affair had never happened? Let me know in the comments, and thank you for watching.